This myth gives us a new counterfactual indication that Nippur preceded Eridu in existence, while it is established through the Sumerian king's legends that Eridu is the first of the five Sumerian cities before the flood. Additionally, scientific evidence has proven that Eridu is the first settled city in southern Iraq, because Eridu is the home of the god Enki and Nippur is the home of the god Enlil. We believe that this myth points to a religious priestly conflict that attempted to give Nippur importance and precedence over Eridu. This indicates a form of masculine coup and its centrality, as Enki did not strictly represent a masculine side, while Enlil completely represented that. Enki, on the other hand, signifies what remains of the mother goddess, as he was her son, husband, and heir. The myth begins with praise for the god Enki, and how he built his house of silver and lapis lazuli in his city Eridu, and it was decorated with gold. According to the myth in this part, the lord of the abyss, the king Enki, Enki, the lord who decrees the fates, built his house of silver and lapis lazuli, its silver and lapis lazuli, like sparkling light, the father fashioned fittingly in the abyss, the creatures of bright countenance and wise, coming forth from the abyss, stood all about the Lord Nudimud, the pure house be built, he adorned it with lapis lazuli. He ornamented it greatly with gold. In Eridu he built the house of the water bank, its brickwork, word uttering, advice giving, its like an ox roaring, the house of Enki, the oracles uttering. And thereafter he needs the blessing of the greatest god of Sumer, Enlil, who resides in Nippur. Therefore he prepares his boat for the journey, and emerges from the waters of the Abzu, his abode. According to the myth in this part, Enki is now ready to proceed by boat to Nippur to obtain Enlil's blessing, for his newly built city and temple. He therefore rises from the abyss. When Enki rises, the fish rise. The abyss stands in wonder. In the sea joy enters. Fear comes over the deep. Terror holds the exalted river. The Euphrates, the south wind lifts it in waves. And when the god Enki arrives at the city of Nippur, he finds a grand feast arranged for him by the god Enlil, who invited the gods, the Anunnaki, to celebrate the completion of Enki's house. Drinks are served, and the gods become intoxicated. Then, on this occasion, the god Enlil speaks, and from his words, it appears that he is the father of the god Enki. This is natural as Enlil must become Enki's father to achieve absolute supremacy and to make Nippur the origin of Eridu, which is what the priests of Nippur accomplished, according to the myth in this part. And so Enki seats himself in his boat and first arrives in Eridu itself. Here he slaughters many oxen and sheep. He then proceeds to Nippur, where immediately upon his arrival, he prepares all kinds of drinks for the gods and especially for Enlil. Then. Enki in the shrine Nippur gives his father Enlil bread to eat. In the first place he seated An, the heaven god. Next to An he seated Enlil. Nintu he seated at the big side. The Anunnaki seated themselves one after the other. And so the gods feast and banquet until their hearts become good, and Enlil is ready to pronounce his blessing. Enlil says to the Anunnaki, Ye great gods who are standing about, my son has built a house, the king Enki. Eridu, like a mountain, he has raised up from the earth. In a good place he has built it. Eridu, the clean place, where none may enter. The house built of silver, adorned with lapis lazuli. The house directed by the seven lyre songs, given over to incantation, with pure songs. The abyss, the shrine of the goodness of Enki, befitting the divine. Decrees. Eridu, the pure house having been built. Enki praise. Here ends the text of Enki's journey to Nippur. Goodbye.